So that is what we look at, we want to compute the gradient of the log likelihood with respect to the parameters of our model. So let us just consider a loss with respect to a single training data right. So remember the loss is a summation over all the training examples, I am just going to consider it for a given single training example ok. And this probability I can write it as this, what am I have done here, what is that operation? marginalized, I have marginalized over all the hidden variables and what is z? Partition function just to make sure that this is a probability distribution, so far so good ok. And actually z is a summation over what? Summation over v comma h right, it is a summation over all possible values of v comma h and here you already have a summation of all possible values of h ok. So now let us just kind of uh, tear this equation apart further and keep putting in more details. So this is log of a by b, so I have written as a log of a minus log of b, where the b part I am writing it as now that summation over v comma h. So this is essentially z which is summing over all possible values of v comma h. So how many terms are there in this summation? How many terms are there in this summation? m n into n, all possible configurations of v comma h. How many terms are there in this summation? 2 power m plus n, is that clear? How many terms are there in the first summation? How many terms are there in the first summation? 2 power n, ok, fine. So let us start taking the derivative with respect to theta. So this is what it will look. So this is derivative of log of something, so what would we have? 1 over something into derivative of that right and then we have derivative of exponent of something. So what would that be? Exponent of something into derivative of that something right, that is how it is going to proceed. So can I directly write it as this, you have 1 over something which was this guy, then you have the exponent repeated because derivative of e raise to x is e raise to x and then finally you have the derivative of the energy function and you have this negative fun negative sign which I have taken outside right, you have this minus e of v h here, so I have taken that outside. And the same thing for the second term also, I just want you to stare at it for 30 seconds and be sure that you are comfortable with this, okay, just uh, reorganize things, I have just taken this denominator inside ok. Everyone comfortable with this, how many of you are fine with this, please raise your hands, you guys are not fine with this third row last three, fine with this, ok, just too lazy, uh, ok. Now let us focus on this and this, these are the two things that I am going to focus on, is that fine? So first I am taking the second guy, right, that is exactly what p of v comma h is, this is nothing but the partition function, so p of v comma h is 1 by z into the energy function, right, exponent of the energy function. How many of you get this? ok and now see having seen this can you tell me what this is going to be, I am asking you about this quantity, the one in the circle, p of v given h, I want everyone to answer, p of v given h, what is the denominator, ok let me make things easy for you right, I will just multiply and divided this by 1 by z. So what is the numerator now? What is the numerator? P of v comma h. What is the denominator? P of v. So P of v comma h divided by P of v, what is it? H given v, ok. Fine. So what we have is that actually the derivative takes the following form. I just I do not need to say it again, right. so it is just that it is p of h given v into some quantity and then the other one is p of v comma h into some quantity and this atrocious summation outside it right, in both the cases, 1 over 2 raise to m plus n terms and the other over 2 raise to n terms, right, is that fine, ok. Um, let me just peek into the next slide, I have just written this again, 
and theta is a collection of all the variables that we have. Now what is this quantity scalar, vector, matrix, tensor, theta is a collection of all the parameters that we have. Okay, either call it a matrix or a vector, right? If I mean, it depends on how you see it. If you just see all the parameters as a collection as a vector, then it's fine. If you think it's a matrix because you have this kind of a neural network kind of a form, then it's also fine, right? So it's going to be some collection of gradients. And whenever you want to collect a lot of partial derivatives, what do we do? What's our standard recipe? What do we do? Take take the derivative with respect to any one element and then kind of generalize to the entire gradient, right? So we'll just focus on one of these weights, which is Wij, and from there we'll try to generalize for the entire gradient. Okay, fine. So now I'm taking the derivative of the energy function with respect to one. So just remember that the d theta was completely inside the summation. So I'm now just replying the d, replacing the d theta by d Wij, one of the weights. Everyone is fine so far, right? No confusion at this point. Okay. Now what's this derivative? V i minus V i h j, right? So this minus and that minus would cancel. Uh, will I still have this summation? Will I still have that summation? Yes, that summation will remain, right? This is the summation which is disappearing, right? The, on the energy function you have a summation, that's the one which is disappearing. And similarly for this guy, is this is the same, right? So you have it as this, okay. We can actually write the above as a sum of two expectations. What are those expectations? Mine are none, but what are those expectations? You have to tell me these two things. What is the formula of expectation? Summation x p x. What am I asking you actually? What is x and what is p x? So can you tell me what goes inside the bracket? H i v j and this is an expectation with respect to the distribution h given v and what about this? Same expectation with respect to v comma h, right? So we can write this as a summation of two expectations. So just imagine the bigger scenario, right? That you have one training example. Let's assume you are doing stochastic gradient descent. You have one training example. For one of the parameters, you have computed the gradient of the loss function with respect to that parameter. This is for one training example. Now to compute that gradient, you need to compute this expectation which actually sums over an exponential number of quantities. That means for every sta step of stochastic gradient descent, you need to do an exponential number of computations. Everyone realizes that what is happening in the bigger picture, you are running the loop for gradient descent and at one particular step of stochastic gradient descent, you need to do this gradient computation. In fact, you need to do it for every step of gradient descent and at that point, you need to compute a summation which requires an exponential number of computations. Clearly, this is not tractable, right? This is going to be hard to do. But we have come up with a proper formula for what the gradient is supposed to be. And now from here on, what will we do? What are, what are we always good at? Approximation, right? So we'll start doing some approximations so that we don't have to do these exponential number of computations, okay? So is that clear? So now let's just focus on the overall paradigm that we are sitting under so that we know exactly where we are. So we go back to our data, model, parameters, learning algorithm and objective function. Data, what's the difference here? You only have the x's, you don't have the y's. Model, we have chosen RBMs as the model. Parameters are clear from the model itself. The objective function was maximize the probability of every training instance that I have in my data. And the learning algorithm was back propagation with gradient descent. And now to do gradient descent, I have this issue that I need to compute these two expectations and it's not straightforward to compute them because it requires an expected uh, exponential number of terms, right? So these are the two things. Now this is the problem that I need to solve. Everything else fits in the story. But now if I have to do gradient descent, how do I approximate this gradient by a fewer number of computations, okay? Fine. So how do we compute these expectations is the question. 
The first summation can actually be simplified and we'll come back to it later on and we'll simplify it and you'll see that most of the terms there disappear except for one or two terms, in fact one term. Uh, but that does still does not, even if I simplify it, it still does not solve my problem because the second term can actually not be simplified. It will still remain the same exponential number of terms and the question is how do we deal with this? What do you do in such situations? No, but yeah, that's what we are doing, stochastic gradient descent. But for one step of stochastic gradient descent, we need to compute this ex expectation which has an exponential number of terms. So I want to avoid that exponential compu computation. So what will I do? If you want to sample from the distribution, you sample from the distribution. Okay, is sampling from this distribution easy? How many of you get that answer? He's saying that you need to sample from the distribution. What does that mean? How many of you understand what sampling from a distribution means? Okay, quite a few. Okay, so the answer is correct, but let's look at a motivation for that and also see why this is hard in the case of RBMs. Right? The answer is absolutely perfect that you need to sample and approximate the total summation by some samples, summation of some samples. Right? That's the correct answer. Why do we need to do that and why is it hard for RBMs? These are the two things that I'm going to focus on today and then we'll solve the problem of why it is hard for RBMs, okay?